uh, and because of your role, what emerging leadership um, needs or trends or development needs are you seeing in terms of being able to manage these um, this, this differences in socializations across generations? What emerging leadership needs are you seeing? Where people, which areas of leadership are people requiring more uh, development? And how can that be understood better? Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Ma, for you know the, the last speaker, she just talked about um, situational leadership and she talked about barriers. I think when she said barriers, I was like, yes, that's the word that's been ringing in my head because um, you know, I think nowadays what leadership, like you mentioned, you talked about different type of teams now. The makeup of teams are now different. The location of teams are now different. What um, type of contracts people have or are even willing to have, very different now. You engage people who now, they don't want you to take their time nine to five. And you know what? They're not apologetic about it. So I think leaders need to really grow in agile leadership. They need to understand how to manage different team types. They need to understand how to manage remote teams. They need to understand that somebody is not necessarily delivering just because I can see them. They need to mm. understand how to set challenging objectives for people so that even when I'm not in the same space with you, I'm very clear about what I need you to deliver. Mm. Whereas, um, managing people, performance management, and all of that was previously left to HR teams. Now you have a situation where line managers are taking a lot of the role that HR does. So I need to and my, my teams, their personal needs. I need to understand about flexi working. I need to understand, you know, about remote working and how to hold people to account to the things that I expect them to deliver. And as a leader, I need to be agile. In other words, I must be able to flex my style. So flexing the style of leadership and, you know, even how you come across, I call it your personal impact as a leader, you know, asking myself the question constantly, why should this person follow me? Why should they give me what I require? What do I need to know? I don't have to be a subject matter expert, but how am I able to um, leverage on the skills that this person has? I'll give an example. I have a personal brand. And um, the person that manages this brand in the last one year, she has worked with three, she, she lives in Nigeria, but she has worked with three other um, international organizations from out of the US. So she wants to work within her own space on her own time, manage several projects at the same time. So when I give her a task to do, she wants to break it down into how many hours of her time do I need? And so leaders have to, understand that now it's not a case of I go into an organization my work time is nine to five but I'm there nine to nine and my boss still expects me to be sitting down there all of that has disappeared so that change in mindset that change in context and in approach has to come into play you have to understand as a leader how to manage your so time management is very key for leaders now because people do not give you their they they really put a premium on their time now with this um, new generation and i totally understand that another thing leaders have to um grow skills in is the use of all these online tools <laughs> so as a leader you can no longer say that i cannot use webex i cannot use zoom i don't know how to do it i can't use teams you're going to you know it's, it's like a suicidal mission you have to understand these different tools and you know what i think um the more we're able to break down all of those barriers in all of the other things that are really unnecessary, then we're really able to tap into the skills because before you blink your eye, you know, these new boomers can use all of these tools. And like I said, I don't necessarily want to know how to use it, but I need to be able to tie somebody to a de deliverable to do what I want them to do and take what they're able to give me and let it uh, um, be satisfied. So my ability to sort of define clearly what I'm looking for and how I want it delivered is a very key skill for leaders to develop. 
Wow. I'll stop here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I hear agile leadership. I hear being able to um, flex our leadership and extend ourselves. I hear being able to understand that the rules of engagement has changed and that the new generations particularly want to be in control to a large extent. And even when you give them those traditional contracts, they still want to control how it is delivered. You know, me, I'm going to come to you now. How much of that do you agree with? And what else do we need to add to that bucket in terms of how the, the maybe the newer generations want to work? And I agree completely with what uh, Ms. Jibril just shared because that's the reality that I actually work in. Um, I, I, I said my assistant, she's on this call. We've probably not seen each other. I mean, 2020, we work remotely all through, okay? And so that's the reality of today. So what else is missing in that bucket that we need to pay attention to? Because she will probably looking from the perspective of an administrator, somebody who has to keep everybody on the straight and narrow. But you guys are the ones who are living the experience. What else is there that leaders need to pay attention to when we deal with the newer generations at work? who are demanding a different set of rules, a different set of way of working in the midst of the transitions that we are going through in the organization of work. Over to you, Yomi. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Yinka Jibril and Mrs. Alishin Louie. You definitely gave a lot of insight and I agree with a lot of what, a lot of what Mrs. Yinka Jibril said. I also think it's important to understand the different dynamics at play and in the organization and understand that multi-generational work workforces are very important because everybody has unique skills they bring to the table. For example, the older generation usually brings specialist and expert knowledge and the things that experience brings to the table, there's no amount of Google that can bring certain things. No, that's that's the truth because like, I, I find that a lot of times we want to divide things and say, oh, we have Google, we can do this. Google is great. Digital media is great. It's fast tracked a lot of things, but that specialist knowledge, that expertise of working in a field for so many years and understanding the ins and outs, Google cannot, might not be able to solve it is like when a car breaks down for example now and a new mechanic is touching this touching that trying to remove this wire that wire and a mechanic that has um been in the been a mechanic for 10 years will say is that particular sound the car is bringing is the brake pad you know because you can't take that away so i feel like it's important for us to find ways to understand the middle ground between these two and also understand the motivators for each generation in the workforce. For example, the older, the older generation might prioritize, you know, healthy pensions and all of that more. Meanwhile, the new generation, the tech age, the digital age, we're looking for equity in startups. So if I'm spending so much time, if I'm investing so much energy into this organization, can I have equity? Can I have a per percentage or something, something, something? So I that's just one example, but it's important to understand the career motivators for everybody and try and play to that. Because what, what, what's the incentive that might excite, you know, some someone from the from the older generations might not necessarily excite me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes, so I think that's also that's something very important. And I also feel like there should we should let go of our unconscious biases because a lot of times when people walk into the workplace, we have a bias about them. We look at them, we say, Oh, this person is young, so this must be their personality. You know, a lot of the a lot of boomers and a lot of Older people just see us and say, oh, this person will be rude, they'll be disrespectful, they'll have this behavior, they are going to be a handful. And 
us too, we look at them and we're like, they're probably not tech savvy. They probably don't, um, <laughs> they, prob they probably will not be flexible and all of that. So all those unconscious biases, when they come to play, we never really get to experience and learn. And I think that there should be something introduced in organizations along the lines of cross-sectional mentorship in the sense that pairing people from different generations together to work together in teams instead of like separations because there's a lot to be gained from specialist knowledge, expertise, best practices and the perspectives the older generation will bring. And the younger generation has a lot to bring in terms of their tech savviness, their agility, the way they are able to interpret and solve problems, the way they are able to, like their turnover rates and things like that. So I think cross-sectional mentorship is very, very important and it's something that should be included in the um, intrinsics of setting up relationships in the organizations. I think those are a few recommendations. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much. I must say a big thank you to all three of you. You've been amazing. Uh, you've, you've, you've blown our minds. And I learned quite a lot just, just listening to what's coming. Your worship, those are, those are big words for the older generation, okay? We have to consciously be intentional about how leadership deals with those. Because just like you shared, it is very, very true. We go through those things in moments. And unless we address them, they will be like um, we learned earlier, there will be barriers to us harnessing the potentials that are inherent in multi-generational uh, workplaces. So thank you very much. Now this